Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles, all the flat, unraised spirits that hath dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden, oh, the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? Oh, pardon, since a crooked figure may attest in little place a million. And let us ciphers to this great account on your imaginary forces work. Suppose within the girdle of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies, whose high upreared and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder. Piece out our imperfections with your thoughts into a thousand parts divide one man and make imaginary puissance. Think when we talk of horses that you see them printing their proud hooves in the receiving earth, for tis your thoughts that must now deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping over times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, admit me, chorus, to this history, who, prologue like your humble patience, pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge, our play. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep. Perchance to dream. Ay, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make of a bare bodkin. Who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country, from whose bourne no traveller returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to those that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied over the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard that currents turn awry, and lose the name of action. Soft now, the fair Ophelia. Nymph, in thy orisons, be all thy sins remembered. I have heard, but not believed, the spirits of the dead may walk again. If such thing be, thy mother appeared to me last night, for ne'er was a dream so like a waking. 
to me comes a creature, sometimes her head on one side, some another. I never saw a vessel of like sorrow, so filled, so becoming, in pure white robes, like very sanctity. She did approach my cabin where I lay, thrice bowed before me, and gasping to begin some speech, her eyes became two spouts. The fury spent anon did this break from her. Since fate against thy better disposition hath made thy person for the thrower out of my poor babe, according to thine oath, places remote enough are in Bohemia there weep, and leave it 